Um, so some of the top priorities I see that uh, for advancing sexual and reproductive health in the context of the SDGs. Um, the first one I think is really ensuring equal access to quality services for all people regardless of age, marital status, um, making sure that they have access to quality family planning and sexual reproductive health services. The second priority is providing education, skill building, um, and information to young people starting at young ages. You know, there's um, a lot of, of a need to, to reach people both in and out of school um, with information about their bodies, about puberty, about sexual and reproductive health, and the sooner that we can reach them and get ahead of their family planning and sexual and reproductive health needs, then we'll be better be able to reduce unintended pregnancy. The third thing that I think is really important in the context of the SDGs is gender equality and women's empowerment. So making sure that we are engaging men and boys in this process and really advancing women's empowerment um, so that we're addressing some of the social norms that really prevent young people from accessing um, services that they need. Yeah, so I think that there's um, a few different levels. On the policy level, we need to make sure policies support young people accessing services, that parental consent is not required, that it doesn't matter if you're married or unmarried. I think at the community level, there needs to be more engagement with parents and religious leaders and mothers-in-laws, fathers-in-laws, so that um, there's more community support for young people seeking services. I think at the service level, providers need to be engaged. Instead of having this issue of bias around young, young people accessing services, how can providers be agents of change so that young people feel comfortable accessing those services? Um, so I think you know a lot of the things I just mentioned, um, where we have a political environment that doesn't support people accessing services, where in some countries it's illegal to access services if you're not married, I think that is a huge challenge. Um, I think there's some, some really uh, harmful social norms you know, that have been challenging. Child marriage, one of them that you know, once you are married, um, and if that's at a young age, you have a pressure to prove your fertility, so that's um, encouraging younger people to have children earlier. Um, and I think you know, youth participation, meaningful youth participation, involvement, engagement, and um, uh, user-centered design. So having young people say, here's what I want, and programs really taking that to heart and um, start putting youth at the center. I think that's been something that we haven't done enough of and we need to do and more. So I think in a country like India, and we see this in other countries where you have a law that might say, don't, you know, you're not allowed to get married under the age of 18, yet it's still happening. So that gets to the enforcement of policies and the implementation. And I think really working with communities to talk about um, to talk about the norms around child marriage and how, you know, continuing to educate your daughters, continuing to educate your sons, so that they're able to go on and get good jobs and then make you know a living um, has value. Uh, I think that a lot of that community level work is needed to complement some of the policies that might be in support of ending child marriage, but we're not yet seeing that. So I think you know we're investing in a program. Um, in, in Ethiopia that um, really engages uh, stakeholders from, from across the community. So you'll have service providers and religious leaders and parents come together and talk about the problems that they're facing in their community and then go through a process of how they can address those problems um, and uh, really kind of encourage and support their daughters and the young people in their community to live their most kind of successful lives. Um, and so I, I think, you know, civil society has a huge role to play in terms of community engagement um, and dialogue and discourse. So my key message is, um, for the young people, is you have so much uh, power and energy, enthusiasm that we need to harness and, um, and really drive the next 15 years forward so that we can achieve the SDGs and that you have the innovation and the creativity and the intelligence to make it happen and I'm just really excited to see what the next 15 years brings.